everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you our spring books. Um, it's that time of year again where the books get changed over from our winter books to our spring books just in time for all the beautiful daffodils that are growing and Easter which is just around the corner. So I'm really excited to show you our selection this year. Um, I've tried to change it up a little bit because a lot of the books that um, I am still going to be sharing with my kids I have also shared with you many times on my previous spring books videos. So I'm going to link those videos below because they are still 100% relevant. I'm still using a lot of those books from those videos. But I wanted to show you something a little bit fresh this year. So you'll see here that there's not so many um, similar books that I showed you last year and the year before. Year before. Um, so hopefully there'll be some new ideas in this selection for you. So uh, let's get started. Um, let's start with this beautiful book. This one is called Little Bar by Kim Lewis. I think this is out of print now, but you can buy secondhand copies. It's such a sweetly illustrated book, really gorgeous, calm illustrations. And it's all about Little Bar who has lost his mummy and they get reunited in the end. So it's a beautiful spring farm tale that's perfect for a toddler. Um, my little boy, who's almost three, absolutely adores this. Um, it is just so perfect since we live on a farm, um, but I think all children would really love this story. So next up is this beautiful book, Nesting by Henry Cole. This is American, an American book, um, so the robin in this is an American robin, um, but it's a beautiful story about these robins that find each other, they build a nest, um, they lay a beautiful egg in it and then the mummy sits on the egg and eventually the chicks come out um, and then they have to sort of protect the nest through the year, the birds learn to fly, um, predators come and go and you know it goes all the way into autumn and then through winter as well. So a beautiful story that really does encapsulate the whole um, concept of birds nesting and the whole progression from egg to bird. I really like this. It's a very magical story. Um, very, very um, absorbing for children, I find. Both my boys love this. Another book that goes along really well with that nesting book is Clover Robin's Bird House. This is so beautifully illustrated um, and it talks you through some of the different birds that you'll find. There's some interesting facts under all the different flaps. And yeah, the pictures are just so stunning. There's a little dove house, woodpecker, different things that the woodpeckers eat. Lots and lots of flaps. I'm only just opening a few of those for you. Yeah, really gorgeous. I love the owl, he's so beautiful. Baby owls. Yeah, a beautiful book, one that would work for um, younger children and toddlers. So I think I did show this to you last year. It's End Then It's Spring by Julia Foglier. Oh, Foglier, no, Foglier, no. <laughs> um, and but this is quite a new one to us, so I was definitely gonna bring it out again. It's all about a little boy who's planting some seeds and he has to wait and wait and wait until they grow. The illustrations in this are really beautiful. Um, and lots of green at the end um, so lots to see and just a beautiful book so that was definitely going to go back on our shelves this year my oldest son really likes to sit down and listen to chapter books now and this is a lovely one for spring it's the mouse and mole series by Joyce Dunbar illustrated by James Matthew and this is a story of mouse and mole and um, they're planning on going on a picnic and there's lots of beautiful illustrations. It reminds me a little bit of The Wind in the Willows um, and really beautiful. So on the back it says, and so the two friends make their plans, a picnic of cheese and cucumber sandwiches if it is a fine day or roasted chestnuts and toasted muffins in front of an applewood fire if it's wild and wintry. But what will they do if it's an in-between sort of day? Make friends with Mouse and Mole as you follow them through a series of warm, simply told and gently humorous tales. Ideal for reading aloud to young children again and again. Very, very sweet. I highly recommend this series. Another book all about birds is The Little Book of Garden Bird Songs. Um, these books are fantastic. There's a whole series of these. Um, there's a Dawn Chorus one, which would be really great for this time of year as well. 
and it goes through all the different birds you might see in your garden. So this is a lovely one to take outside as well. And then they have the corresponding buttons so you can press, turn it on. So you really get a good um, amount of birdsong played. There's a little on and off button as well, which is great if you've got toddlers that like to press the buttons loads. <laughs> it's quite nice to switch it off. Um, but very, very sweet. I like this a lot. Um, and like I said, there's a whole range of these um, song or sound books. Um, there's safari sounds, ocean sounds, nighttime animal sounds, and quite a few different bird ones, woodland birds, storm chorus, and this one. So love these, really, really recommend this whole series, but this is perfect for spring and summer. Um, we are both, we are gardeners here on the farm, so um, we do come across a lot of worms. So I have included a couple of worm books. This is the Mucky Mini Bee series, and I really love this series. They have a whole load of these books. They have ants, centipedes, snails, which would be really fun as well. And the illustrations are great in this book. They're really colorful, engaging, and um, obviously full of facts as well. So I learned so much from this book that I did not know about worms, but I was just so impressed at how gorgeous the illustrations are. Um, just perfect for kids and for me <laughs> and they show you different types of worms that you can find and really every fact you could want to know about worms is in this book um, and at the back there's a little project to make a wormery so love this I think this would be quite fun for spring and summer and when we're out in the garden so much more and learning all about worms and compost and that kind of thing I also have another one book. This is Yucky Worms by Vivian French, illustrated by Jessica Alberg. This is part of the Walker Books Nature Storybook series, which I love. They're really good. They're very educational. Um, this one has stunning illustrations in it. And again, learning lots of interesting facts about worms. This would be great for a slightly older child or you know, younger child, if you're older than a toddler. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I think it's just absolutely brilliant. So another great addition for us for our spring books. We have A Nest is Noisy by Diana, Diana Hutz, Ashton and Sylvia Long. These books are so beautiful. There's a whole series of these and it shows you lots of different nests um, in this particular book. There's also um, a rocks book, um, there's a butterfly book. And the illustrations are very, almost like scientific. They're really crisp and clear, which I love. Um, there is some interesting facts as well. Look at those illustrations, they're just incredible. Really, really interesting. These books um, by Dan Hutz Ashton are definitely worth investing in um, for your nature library because they are just full of interesting facts and visually so stimulating. So definitely one that I would recommend. This little book for my youngest is Usborne's Little Board Books, The Rainy Day um, by Anna Milbourne, illustrated by Alice Calderella. And we actually got this out of the library, but it's so cute, I had to show you. So it's all about a rainy day, which is very appropriate for spring, pretty much all year round up here. Um, and just, I just love these illustrations. I just thought this was so, so sweet and very um, perfect for a toddler. Lovely little ducks and worms and snails and a big colorful rainbow. Um, I just love this. I think it's so well done, so cute. Um, so I knew I'd have to show this in this video because I just think it's really charming. Okay, so we're back on to the nesting theme again. <laughs> Lots of bird books here um, this month. And um, this is Mama Built a Little Nest by Jennifer Ward. We did have this last year, but I'm not sure that I actually showed it to you, so which is why I'm bringing it out now. Um, I haven't read this in a year, so I can't quite remember it. Um, but it, I do remember, like, it's got a good little story here. It's all about different birds and their nests. And there's interesting facts down here. And I remember we all really enjoyed this. And again, it ties in really nicely with that book I just showed you. Oops, dropping books. Um, on nests. Um, so it's a little bit more of a storybook version. But again, it's all about the different nests that you'd see with birds. Really, really interesting. And like I said, it's got some more facts down there, but it's got a very easy story to follow. So good for a variety of ages. This is a new book for this year, and it is so pretty. It's called Beautiful Eggs. It's illustrated by Alice Lindstrom. 
and it's a journey through decorative traditions from around the world. It's a board book, so it's great for all ages, but look at these illustrations, they are so, so pretty. Um, they show you different types of eggs that are um, made all around the world. So they have the name, um, and then a little bit of information, and then a stunning illustration. It's just so interesting to learn about other people's cultures and how they decorate the eggs. And of course, if something um, is really interesting to you and your kids, you could look at crafting um, using that particular skill. So then there's a stencil at the back <laughs> where you can trace out an egg and then illustrate it. Um, such a great idea, a beautiful book, a lovely little gift that you give at um, Easter as well to a child. Now, I've got um, these lovely Fletcher books. I've got two of these for our spring shelves. I love this little fox, Fletcher. He's so cute. Um, this is written by Julia Rawson and uh, Tiffany Beek. And there's a whole series of these seasonal Fletcher books. This is Fletcher and the Springtime Blossom. And what I love about these are they are so gentle. The illustrations are very calming, very Waldorf inspired. Um, the story is excellent to read, really engaging, um, very nature based, these sweet little animals in it. And then there's always like a sort of shiny page at the end, there's a nice blossom page. Um, really recommend these. They are so perfect. I just can't, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love these. They have got a really dreamy, soft, um, kind feel to them and everything that I would want in a children's picture book. Um, really, really wonderful. And like I said, there's a whole series of these to take you through the whole year. Um, and then finally on this row, I've got Rosie's Hat, which I think I showed you last year. Um, this is by Julia Donaldson and Anna Curry. This book is about a little girl who loses her hat on a very windy day. And I just think that's perfect for spring. Lots of gorgeous illustrations in it, um, a fun story for kids. There's a ladder in it, which my children will appreciate massively. Um, and yeah, I just thought that was quite a fun one for spring. Okay, so moving on to the top shelf. Again, some of these books you might've seen before, but a lot of them I think are new. Um, so let's start with one which I possibly could have shown you last year, but it's such a gorgeous book. It's Busy Spring, Nature Wakes Up by Sean Taylor and Alex Morse. <laughs> Not very good at pronouncing people's surnames. Um, this is one of our favourite spring books. It's so sweet. It's a lovely story about a family who are gardening together. Um, lots of like interesting little things about spring and the different wildlife. Really gorgeous pictures, I think. Um, very, very beautiful to look at. And yeah, just has pretty much everything in it that you would want from a uh, spring book. Really lovely and a gorgeous, like nice big size as well. Uh, this one you've definitely seen before. It's Mud by Mary Lynn Ray. Um, my kids love mud. So this beautiful sort of Waldorf inspired book about squelching and staring at mud is just perfect. Um, and it's one that we love dearly. This book is perfect for Easter time. It's The Runaway Bunny by Margaret Wise Brown. Um, it's a very sweet story about a naughty baby bunny and his mummy who's sort of showing him how much she loves him. The pictures are very sort of um, nostalgic, a bit retro, um, very, very lovely to look at and a gorgeous sort of bedtime story about a mother's love, really gorgeous. Um, I do love this book, very charming. Of course, you can't have spring without the story of the Root Children by Sybil von Olfus. This is a real classic story about these little children living underground, they're like the seed children, and as spring starts to appear, they make their little beautiful clothes out of coloured fabric, and they get all dressed up and emerge as flowers. It's so beautiful and magical, the story. I love the illustrations in it. It's just very, very special. Um, another classic is a Beatrix Potter story, Jemima Puddle Duck. This again is about um, eggs and nests, so I thought it'd be perfect. It's got lots of lovely illustrations in it, um, a very naughty fox and um, a tale, a bit of a moral tale to this as well, um, but a lovely story. Another very nostalgic classic is Little Grey Rabbit, who I read a lot as a child, and I'm very um, keen to read her stories to my boys. This is Hare and the Easter Eggs. 
um, and it, it's such a nice little story um, for Easter. Has lots of descriptions of chocolate eggs in it, um, little grey rabbit who's very, very sweet, and the hare who's a bit silly. Um, quite a long story, so perfect for slightly older uh, children to read as well, um, but also nice for toddlers as a read aloud. So next up is another bird nest book. <laughs> There's quite a theme going on here, I know. Um, and this is another series by Walker Books. This is their science storybook series, which is also fantastic. And this one is about forces. Um, and the book is called Bird Builds a Nest. I think I said that already. Um, and it has really lovely cutout illustrations. Um, a simple story, but then, you know, applying this idea of force, scientific idea of force. Um, so even with a younger child, they can still get a lot out of this book because it's a really nice story about a bird collecting things for a nest. But of course, then you've got um, the scientific principle um, of force. And then at the end, it tells you a bit more about pushing and pulling. And those are the other books in the science storybook series. Another sweet Fletcher story is Fletcher and the Caterpillar. I already showed you Fletcher and the Springtime Blossoms. I've got the same thing to say about this book. Charming story. Gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations um, and just a lovely, gentle Waldorf approach um, to this book. I really, really love it. This one's obviously about a caterpillar. Fletcher and his friends try and find ways to make it play with them, but it's not interested. And then eventually it does turn into a beautiful, shiny butterfly. So very cute. We've read this loads already. Um, a really gorgeous book. So this was a book that we got as part of a book subscription. It's Rob Ramsden's We Found a Seed. This is a really simple story about two children who find a seed and they plant it and watch it grow. It sort of takes you through the seasons and all the different things that a flower needs to grow. So really nice and simple, great for a young toddler. Rob Ramsden has a whole garden series, so he's got I Saw a Bee as well, and we planted a pumpkin. So quite a fun book for that younger age group, and it sort of breaks down the whole idea of seed sowing in a way that they can understand. New book, also by Margaret Wise Brown, is The Golden Egg Book. Um, this is a little golden board book. These books are so sweet, they're really retro, and they're reprints, I think, of books from the 50s. We've got a couple already. This was a new one this year. So this book is a very sweet tale about a lovely little bunny rabbit and an egg. He's sort of imagining what could be in the egg, um, and he sort of spends lots of time exploring this egg and playing with it until at the very end, out pops a little duck. Very, very cute, charming book, perfect for Easter. This is a book I have shown you before. It's The Egg, My First Discoveries. This is great for any children who want to know what exactly are eggs. It will bring you through the whole thing of how eggs are created, um, the little chicken side, and then also different types of eggs. Um, as well and things that are done with eggs. So really interesting. I do love this My First Discovery series. It is fantastic. Another beautiful um, nostalgic story is The Country Bunny and the Little Gold Sho Shoes by Dubas Hayward and pictures by Marjorie Hack. It says on the back, the country bunny is a lady and she attains the exalted position of Easter Bunny in spite of her responsibility as a mother of 21 children. That the story ends with success and reward is of course as every child should wish. And the pictures in this story are just stunning. Like really beautiful, how sweet is that? Um, and very, very nostalgic and vintage. Um, very beautiful to look at. And quite a long story too, so perfect for um, a younger child who's sort of can able to to listen to a slightly longer story, but the pictures in it are just very engaging and wonderful, so I do love this one. Uh, Pele's New Suit by Elsa Besco is one of my favorite stories for spring. It's about a little boy who looks after his sheep, he shears the sheep, and he weaves it and turns it into a suit. Um, I just love the whole um, idea of teaching children where their clothing comes from and also the work and effort that goes behind it um, with the dyeing and everything. It's just so um, magical, I think. Really, really beautiful. Such a simple concept, this one, but one that I would definitely not be without. And another new one for this year is Ollie's Magic Bunny by Nicola Killeen. 
We had purchased the Halloween version of this book and we really liked it, so I thought I would try her Easter version. It's about a little girl called Ollie and her toy bunny, and the toy bunny comes alive and they have a magical adventure together. Um, very sweet, fun, cute illustrations, um, a really lovely addition to our bookshelves. One of my favourite new purchases for this year is this really beautiful story, The Bunny Who Found Easter by Charlotte Solotoy, sorry I can't, I'm really bad at pronouncing surnames, illustrated by Helen Craig and I'm pretty sure Helen Craig is the illustrator behind Angelina Ballerina because it's got really similar feel factor. And this is all about um, a bunny who's sort of discovering the meaning of Easter, which in his case is falling in love with another bunny and having a sweet little bunny family together. It's incredibly gentle. The illustrations are very, very beautiful. It takes you through a whole year um, of this bunny looking for um, Easter and looking for the meaning of it. And at the end he finds his bunny love and yeah, he has his little bunny family. It's just so, so cute. Um, I love just how gentle this is. It's not religious. and It's just all about a bunny and his quest for love. It's just so sweet. I think this is definitely one of my favorites this year. And I am a massive, massive fan of Angelina Ballerina. But of course I've got two boys and there is only so much ballet I can shove at them before they're like, mum, no, we, we don't like ballet. Um, they do like the Angelina Ballerina books but um, they're probably not as keen on it as I am. So I buy Angelina Ballerina mainly for myself, but this, this book I feel is a little bit more um, appropriate for them as well. So um, I'm very, very happy with this purchase. It is very charming, highly recommend it. Definitely go grab a copy of it. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video has given you lots of ideas of beautiful books you can get for your children this spring. And um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and of course, go over and check out my Patreon page. Each month I have a Q&A, Zoom call, I have an extra bonus behind the scenes vlog, as well as tons more content, so do check it out. I've also gone and written my own book this year. It is all about herbal remedies from the garden. I'll link it below, it's called The Garden Apothecary. So if you love my channel and you would like to support it, do consider purchasing a copy. Thank you so much and I will see you soon in another video. Bye.